Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing? Great. So, um, yeah, I've got some magnets and some bookmarks you can even use on and Kindle if you want to, um, if you'd like one of those. But you know what I'm going to do? Uh, where can I put these? Shall I just put these with you, Emma, or I'll put them here? But um, I've got some Toblerone as well, so let's pass this around. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. For, those, for those who are needing some Toblerone, it's, it's there for you. I, I know that. It's so fickle, isn't it? It takes a Toblerone to be Daniel's favorite. <laughs> it is absolutely wonderful to be here with you. Um, and Emma and, Je and Ben, thank you for having me here and the, the rest of the leaders here. Just really, really good. Just put your hands up before God. Is that okay? Just, let's just keep our hands open and our hearts open. And Holy Spirit, just thank you that we could uh, sing your praise. And Lord, you say, open up the ancient doors and the King of glory will come in. That's right. And Lord, I ask for that this morning, that you, the King of glory, will come in. As, as we were singing, um, I felt there were just three things that God gave me. The first thing, that somebody's been struggling with headaches, just really bad headaches. And I just want to, I want to ask God to bring his healing, his healing power here this morning. So if that's you, can I ask you, I know it's sort of a bit embarrassing here, but I can see vaguely, can you just, oh, there he is, okay. Um, and, and there may be more than one, but I, I think it's almost stress related, there's stuff that's been going on. Just, and, and if you wouldn't be, if you wouldn't mind just standing, let me, let me tell you why. I'm standing as well. It's just almost like I'm, I'm changing my position. That's good. I'm just changing my position. So I can't get you doing flick flacks. I wouldn't do them either. Um, but just changing our position in the, in the physical. The other thing that I got was throat problems. Somebody's been struggling with their throat. It's been really giving you a jib. And if that's you, please will you stand as well. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And then um, the third thing I saw was just a brick wall. It's like a brick wall, wow. and you need to see a situation shift. It's really radical. You've been thinking, yeah. God, this has got, there's got to be a breakthrough yeah. here. Um, and if that's you, please would you stand as well. So, Lord, I, I thank you so much that we can be quick mm -hmm. to respond to you yeah. because you're speaking to us. You're coming to us with all your goodness and with all your grace and with all your love. So those folk who are standing, would you, would folk around you, would you mind just go, putting your hand out towards them? I see the Toblerones making it all over this uh, auditorium this morning. But uh, let's, just, let's just put up our hand towards yeah, no, no, these no, no, folk. No, 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 no. Just let's be, I loved what you said about community. Community is when one of us hurts, hmm. we don't stand with folded arms. Yeah. We, we come close and we say, hey, I'm with you. I'm That's standing right. with you. That's good. I'm standing with you. And so that's what we're doing right now. Holy Spirit, just thank you for this tribe that's here today. And thank you, Lord, that one of our values is that we love one another. Uh, we love you, Jesus, but we live life and we love one another. And Lord, I just thank you right now. We stretch out our hands to these people, but we also stretch out our hearts to you. That's good. And Lord, I ask right now that you would supernaturally move in lives. I thank you that those who are struggling with headaches, Lord, that whatever's causing that, whatever the situation is, that you would bring ease in the yes. midst of disease. I thank you for that, that no fear would come near doors. I pray for those with throat problems. Yeah. Lord, you are the God who heals. Yeah. And once again, I want to, I want to just um, speak against any fears. Yeah. 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 I love the fact that fears of false expectations appearing real. Yeah. Wow. And you come will on. not come near their doors. Lord, I yeah. thank you that when fear comes, they will open it with your yeah. faithfulness. Yeah. Your faithfulness. And Lord, for those who are needing situations to shift, Lord, it seems like a brick wall. I thank you that you are Baal Padazem. That's what it says in the Old Testament. The master of breakthrough. Wow. Yeah. Come and on. Lord, I thank you that when we feel like we can't get through this wall, you walked yeah. through walls. Come on. Yeah. And Hallelujah. so, Lord, I thank you right now. Yeah. For your goodness and your kindness yeah. and healing in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yay. So um, 
I am so delighted, and I'm the first guest speaker here. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Um, so I'm going to take off my watch because blessed are the short-winded. Um, they shall be invited back. Um, that's just a subtle hint right there. But I had to laugh because Ben sent me um, the theme for today, and it was 24-7 party people. And I just had to laugh because I am not a party person. <laughs> I seriously am not. I'm not miserable. I'm not none of those things. But for me, the thing of going into a big party, yes, I stand up here, but inside, I'm actually quite an introvert. I'm quite quiet. And, uh, you know, a dinner party, that's great. And, you know, Emma, your family are something else. They take it to another level. It's all about fancy dress and food fights. And I just think that is my worst in the whole wide world. I just, it's, so when I read this, I thought, oh, that is so funny. But what I do absolutely run after is joy. Yeah. I run after joy. I seriously do. And, you know, what absolutely amazes me is that the word joy is in the Bible 650 times. And there's something, I'm not talking about happiness. You know, happiness is just walking around like a big smile on your face. You fake it till you make it kind of thing. But joy is something deep that holds us through storms and droughts, yeah. through, you know, disappointments. Yeah. Yeah. And concerns, there's that steady joy. Steady joy. And in Galatians 4, verse 16, the writer of Galatians, there's a book in the New Testament, it's a chap called Paul. And he makes the statement, he says, hey, what's happened to your joy? Wow. What's happened to your joy? Wow. And you know, for us, if we are going to, what, what's the uh, three little words for this place? Live life. What's it? Love Jesus. Love people and follow Jesus. Live free. I want to say to you, if we're going to get a hold of all three of those words, to live and love and follow, we've got to be led by that spirit of joy. Joy is contagious. There's something about us that people go, I want what you have. You know, I love, I, I live in a, in sale. Don't hold that against me, not stockboard. But I live in sale. And yesterday, my neighbor, gorgeous, gorgeous lady, just, you know, she knocked on the door. Now, here's the weird thing. So we both buy this HelloFresh. That's a free advert. Um, HelloFresh. And, and she came and she said, I've got some feta cheese. I went, yeah. And she said, um, we didn't use it. Would you like to use it? And I looked at her I thought, you're not here to give me feta cheese. I know that. You wanted something to come over. And then we got to, in, a, in a conversation, and this darling woman has just had some medical results. And I said this to her. I said, um, Emma, I'm going to pray for you right now. And she went, oh, no. And I said, no, I will because this is my house, and I do what I like in my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's my house. Yeah. And so I prayed, you know, and I opened my eyes, and, and said amen and she was just her eyes were about this bit and she, she went I wanted to applaud you wow. and I thought how cool is that yeah. said you can if you like and she said no I'm not going to do it <laughs> but joy yeah. joy and I just thought God it's it's your joy that's alluring her to wow. come and be in our home but um, I love it I, call it, I suddenly realized what I said our home it's Jesus in my home yeah. but I'm going to just speak to you a little bit from uh, a real party that happened and it's in john chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. it's in the new testament gospel of john fourth book uh, in the new testament and um this is about a wedding and it says this on the third day a wedding took place in cana of galilee jesus's mother was there and jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding and when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding uh, from 20 to 30 gallons. That's about 80 to 100 liters. 
And Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And so they filled them to the brim. And then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from. Though the servants who had drawn the water, they knew. And then he called the bridegroom aside. And he said, everyone brings out the choice wine first. And then the cheaper wine after the, the guests have got off their face. No, it doesn't say that. After the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory or his goodness. And his disciples believed in him. Isn't that amazing, amazing story? 24-7 party people. Now, weddings in the Middle Eastern culture were quite, you know, quite a thing. For us, weddings just kind of last a few hours. You married? Yes. Uh, what time of day did you get married? Uh, one. And when did it end? Uh, about midnight, I think. No, that's the wrong answer, that one there. <laughs> because I asked you when you got married, and then I said, what time did it end? Still going. <laughs> <laughs> I know, sharp, hey, sharp. I am super sharp. <laughs> but most marriage, most wedding ceremonies, not most marriages, end within a few hours. But most weddings, wedding ceremonies end within a few hours. What, you, about the same for yours? About the same, yes. I, when I first came to the country, I was fascinated with weddings. Because in, in Africa, what you do is, you know, you come to the wedding, everybody comes, and everybody comes to the reception. Here, I realized there were two tiers. So everybody comes to the wedding uh, ceremony, and then you've got tier number one, which is like the very, very posh meal. And if you've got that on your invitation, you've made it. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's tier number two. And the bride and the group constantly are saying to you, actually, you know what, we really want to be there. But no, they don't really. They want that posh meal at the beginning. But we have these two tiers of wedding. But in the Middle Eastern culture, they wouldn't do that. And actually, wedding ceremonies, the whole celebration, was between three and seven days. They had a party. And so there was this party that was going on. It says that Jesus was there. His mother was there. And uh, it, from what can be gleaned, it possibly was a relative's wedding. And his disciples, his mates that he had kind of started gathering with him, they were there as well. And then there's much revelry. Everybody has an absolute ball at this wedding. And suddenly, dun, 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 the music changes. And it says this, and the wine was gone. Well, that's a party pooper of a thing to happen. And Jesus' mother said to Jesus, came to him and says, said this, they have no wine. So more than likely, she was Miss Hospitality of the most. And so she comes to Jesus and she says, no wine. And pretty much what she was saying, this party is coming to an end. There hasn't been enough. It's coming to an end because there's not enough. How many of you have lived in a situation in your life that you've gone from one party to the next and then it's not enough? Yeah. It just isn't enough. Yeah. And you start saying, I can't keep doing this. It's just not enough. Wow. And so she comes to Jesus and she says, they have no more wine. And Jesus' answer is, woman, why do you involve me? Now, he wasn't being disrespectful to her. He was calling her. In the Hebrew culture, it would be a, a statement of honor. And he says to her, woman, why are you involving me? Why does Jesus say that? And then he says this, my hour has not yet come. Because Jesus was seeing way beyond just the little party that's going to go on for a few days or a few hours. He was seeing way beyond and he was saying, Mother, if, we, if I start getting involved now, the ball is rolling 
for what I'm going to do, my redemption plan. And my hour has not yet come. Jesus says that constantly on his journey on this earth. And what he's saying is there's an hour coming where I'm going to die on the cross. And I'm going to pay the price to set people free. And so he's looking at his mum and he's saying, yeah, mum, you, you have no idea what you're asking right now. And I think she did, but I don't think in that moment she was actually thinking about how he was going to die. She was thinking, just son, sort this out, like any good mama could do. And so what happens is Jesus looks around him and he sees these six stone um, jars. And they were called ceremonial jars. And what would happen as part of the culture of the Middle Eastern culture was there was a ritual and regulations about what you had to do before you could enjoy the party. You had to wash your hands, get yourself clean, and all the rest of it. And so there were six of these, and each one, you know, all in all, was about 80 to 100 liters. Now, I am going back to Cape Town next weekend on Sunday, and there's a serious drought in Cape Town. And at the moment, we have only 50 liters per person per day. That's to do everything, all your ablutions. So in, to be honest, I'm not quite looking forward to that. That's the honest truth. And so they fill, these servants go and they fill these jars, these ceremonial jars. Jesus says, fill them up. They'd all been emptied because of all the washing that had gone on. And it says this, they filled it to the brim. When our jars are empty, and Jesus says, now go and fill. I want you to, to begin to obey me. I wonder how convenient it is for us. But these servants obey Jesus. And I have a little phrase that I keep in my office. Obedience is the highest form of worship. Yeah. Wow. Good, man. Come Good. On. Worship is not just singing songs. I yeah. love the songs. By the way, you both have, song, have voices of deliverance. Yeah. Your voices are not just great. They're beautiful voices. But I felt it quite significant that your guitar suddenly stopped there. And God says, actually, it's not your guitar that carries the sound. It's your voice that carries the sound. And it's going to be used in powerful ways to unlock people's lives. But here these guys go and they obey Jesus. They obey Jesus to the brim. I have a little, a little phrase that I once heard somebody say. Partial obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. I'll do it when it's convenient for me. Obedience with murmuring, you, I'll do this, but you want to know that I'm really not happy about, is disobedience. God wants joyful, wholehearted obedience. And I love the way that Jesus in his kindness gets these servants who have no idea what's going on, gets these servants involved with the whole plan. Jesus loves us coming to the party and being part of the action. I love it. I love that he loves us being part of the action. And he says to them, there's this little phrase. It says, then he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. Draw some what out? They didn't know it was going to be wine. So here these servants have been told, put your bucket, put your little, you know, your little cup in there, draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. Can you imagine what was going through their minds? What do you, what's the master of the banquet going to say? What, how are we going to explain this to him? We're servants here. Is he going to have us whipped? What's going to go on here? And I can imagine that every step was a step filled with intrepidation. Let me tell you why. Because up until now, Jesus had done no miracles. So nobody knew that he was the miracle working Jesus. Nobody knew that. Nobody had seen him open eyes, heal people who were lame. Nobody had seen him feed the 5,000. Nobody had seen him raise the dead. Nothing of that had happened. And so they walk towards the master of ceremonies just with a cup, thinking... I don't know what, but there's something compelling about this Jesus that we're going to do it, man. Let's do this. 
And the master of ceremonies tastes that wine, and he says this, my goodness me, this is state-of-the-art wine. This is the best of the best wine. I don't know how many of you have ever tasted really expensive wine. I don't quite get it, but, you know, just that when, when I, I was once in Jersey and I tasted a wine, the bottle was worth 1,200 pounds. And I remember thinking, oh, please, can I just have the bottle to auction? I'll just do that. Don't open it. I'll, I'll use the money for something else. But, you know, I kind of drank it and I thought, Lord Jesus, help me here. Yeah. It doesn't taste any different from any other wine, but anyway, I'll just fake it till I make it. And went, yeah, it's really, really great. <laughs> but here, this master of ceremonies then calls the bridegroom, who up until now, more than likely he had been known what was happening or had become aware of it. And to lose face when wine runs out and there's not enough is a devastating thing in Medi uh, Middle Eastern culture or even in our culture. And here this master of ceremonies comes up to him and I can imagine him just thinking, oh, what's he going to tell us now? And he says, man, you know, this is something else. Most people give the really best wine at the beginning when the palates are fresh. But you've saved the best for last. You know, there is something very, very powerful in that statement. You've saved the best for last. So often we try everything else instead of trying Jesus first. That's right. Because everything else is just not enough. And then it says this, what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs. His first miracle, how about this, was at a party. And his first miracle was turning water into wine. And that first sign is like a first presentation. I don't know how many of you have ever had to do a first presentation. If you're going for something or you're going for a special job. But a first presentation is so important. Because it begins to represent, it puts out there, it's critical so we can put across, uh, uh, across who we are and what we really want to say. We've got that first chance. And here Jesus does it. At a wedding he says, hey guys, I am the Lord of the feast. I'm the Lord of the party. I'm the one who brings that real joy. And beloved, the party that Jesus has for us is not just about an emotional experience. It's not just about having us come together. It's about people. He made a way so that bridegroom's face didn't have an uh, egg all over it. And that's how he wants to be in our lives. And Jesus says to us, when you begin to come to my party, you will taste and you will see that the Lord is good. They tasted the wine and they saw water turn into the wine. Yeah. Taste and see that I am good. In Isaiah 25 verses 6 to uh, 8, let me read this to you. This is in the Old Testament. But it's also what we find way at the end of the New Testament, the book of Revelation. Listen to this. It says, on this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all his people. Wow. And a banquet of aged wine, wow. of best wine, wow. and the best meats and the finest of wines. So they aged and they find on this mountain, I love this, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples and the sheets that cover all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Wow. The sovereign Lord, is a good word, will wipe away yeah. every, uh, wipe away the tears from all faces. And he will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. Yeah. And then this amazing statement, the Lord has spoken. Wow. God has said it. When, when Emma asked who, what our, our, our movies are, what's our best movie? Uh, Joshy over there calls me auntie. <laughs> Spelt with a Y, Josh, not I-E. Anyway. Um, <laughs> 
But Josh said, oh, Lord of the Rings. How many of you like Lord of the Rings? Okay. Do you remember the mountain of, what was it called, Josh? Mountain of fire. What was it called? Mordor. Mordor. All right. You remember that whole scenario? And there's this little point where stuff has happened on that mountain and Sam, it looks like Gandalf's died and Sam's died. Remember that? And then suddenly Sam wakes up and Gandalf's standing next to him. And he says, I thought you were dead. And I thought I was dead. And then Sam makes this statement. I just love it. And I wrote it down here so I wouldn't forget it. Everything sad is going to come untrue. Everything sad is going to come untrue. Jesus is saying, my hour has come. Now, that doesn't mean sad things don't happen in this world that we live in. I know people here sitting in this room who have cried buckets over stuff. But there's going to come a moment where God says, I'm going to wipe away those tears. You won't even remember them. The pain of the moment right now, God says, I'm going to wipe those. And everything sad will become untrue. And so Jesus says, I want you to drink of the wine. But we can drink of that rich wine because he drank, he drank of the cup of suffering. Yeah. Do you remember when he had that last meal with his mates and he took the cup? He said, this is my blood. It's poured out for you guys. And they hadn't a clue what he was talking about. But then they started to see this whole road of suffering that Jesus took so that we can drink the cup of joy in the party. In John 10 verse 10, it says this, the thief, anybody ever been robbed? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, me too. It's not a nice thing. The thief, that's what the enemy's called. The thief comes to rob and he comes to kill. And he comes to destroy. You see, so often what the enemy wants us to do when we're just in our own little natural party, he says, Jesus wants to rob and kill and destroy. Not true. true. And here, Jesus says, the thief, he comes to rob and kill and destroy. He's never given you a brass bean. He's never given his life for you. But I, says Jesus, have come to give you life. And by the way, not just mediocre, boring life. I've come to give you life. And it says this in that John 10. I've come to give you life in abundance. Overflowing. You no longer need those ceremonial jars. I've done away with the old rituals. I've done away with the old religion. I'm bringing you in to relationship with me. I'm bringing you into that place with me. And God says, those signs that I do, the miracles I do, are to reveal my glory, to reveal my goodness. That's what that word means. And it's 24-7 party people. We have to get to that place. In that uh, passage in in John 2, verse 11, it says, uh, he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. They believed in him. And if we are going to be those 24-7 party people, it starts with our belief system. What do we believe? And I believe with all my heart that Jesus is not just a myth or a legend or some kind of historical figure, but he was the real deal. He was the son of God. That he didn't just talk about what you should do to keep your life in order. He said, I'm going to hang on a tree. And I'm not even guilty. And I will hang on this tree because I'll hang there in your place. I want to set you free. I want to give you an eternal hope and a future. I want to give you something worth living for. Because I found something worth dying for. And that was you and me. And Jesus has brought us in to this place today where he says, I want you to be 24-7 party people. But it's not enough, beloveds, to just have a party on the inside here. 
Where I worked, you know, we've seen incredible acceleration in New Day. Incredible. I mean, that then shot that video um, in summer last year. And since then, we've seen um, e-learning come into place. So this last week, we had 15 kids doing e-learning and maths. Actually, no, that's a lie. 20 kids doing e-learning. We've got a robotics class that started. Two groups in our robotics class where these kids in the poorest of poor areas, we're working in the poorest areas. Everybody thinks Cape Town's beautiful, and it is. But we are working in an area called Tambo Village, which is between Guuletu and, Masi, uh, and Manenberg. And we've got the poorest of poor people. We, we're feeding 150 people every day. And they're great things. We've got a sewing enterprise. We've got a health initiative happening. I've heard today, this last week, that there's a guy who's just put a proposal into us. He's a baker and he wants to start setting up a bakery. And he can undercut the supermarkets in the price of bread, which is a staple food. And there's something inside of me that goes yeah. ding, 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 ding. But it's not enough to just do all those things. If I do not present Jesus to those people, yeah, yeah. because all I'm doing is just bringing some relief for now. Yeah. But we've got to have a hope and a future Come that on, goes beyond just today. Yeah. And that's what 24-7 party people on, on, are all about. Yeah. Let's pray. Yeah. Father, I thank you so much that the very first place you did a miracle was at a wedding. And the very first miracle you did was turning water into wine. And I don't know where you guys are here today. I don't know whether you all, you know, know Jesus. But it would be a travesty for you to leave this place and just keep going on what is enough. Can I ever do enough? And you're feeling like the party's coming to an end. And Jesus say, is saying to you, I've got a greater party that I'm preparing for you. And I want you to drink the aged wine, the very finest of wine. But it has to start with the divine exchange. And beloved, Jesus doesn't want us to just have all the information. He doesn't want us to just be informed people. He doesn't want us to have just all the theology. So we can win an argument. It says this, when the, I said you're free, you're free indeed. No matter, even if you're in prison, I've set you free. Yeah. No matter what you're going through, I've set you free because my joy will anchor and hold you steady. That doesn't mean that you'll never ask questions, but you ask from a place of presence. You know what it is to engage with your Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I just want to, I'd want to ask that if there's anybody here today that needs to know that Jesus Christ is Lord, would you be brave enough to open up the ancient doors? Say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. And if you want to do that today, if you're here today and you've never given your life to the Lord, it's the start of the most radical adventure you can ever have. I'm not saying it's going to all be smooth, but I tell you it's going to be worthwhile. Yeah. It's going to be enough. Yeah. And so if that's you, would you mind just indicating to me, and I'd love to pray with you and for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all say this together. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. And, the, and the person who's got their hand up, say it as well. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you are the Lord of the party. I thank you that you died for me on the cross. Lord, I thank you. I've come to the end of my enough. And I step into your abundance. Thank you for this incredible adventure in and with you. You not only died, but you rose from the dead. And you are preparing a banquet for me. And I am not just a guest. 
I'm the bride. I'm right at the center of the party because of what you've done. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Just want to say in closing here, don't ever become a professional Christian. Don't ever allow that to become part of your life where you kind of go, ah, done that bit. I face the most incredible situations. I see the most horrendous situations where people are robbed and killed and destroyed. But I hold on to his life in abundance. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Amen. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much. Whew. I'll have to think about that. That was amazing.